Hello. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the normalization example that you should see posted in uh, on Angel. Uh, if you want, you can print out the Word document. Um, feel free to attack this any way you want to. You can either attempt it yourself, get your solution, and then review my solution, or if you'd rather, just follow this example through with me. All right. What I have now is I have an example of me trying to develop a database to store information about the computers here on campus. All right. Again, um, keep in mind that maybe this came from like an Excel spreadsheet where people defined uh, information about the computers that way and then they chose at a later point to put it in a relational database. If you're doing this, um, starting from scratch, again, you don't have to go through the process of having it completely unnormalized, then first normal form, second normal form, third normal form. You know, you take your best shot and, and uh, see what you come up with and then apply the normalization rules. In this example, though, my aim was to create every mistake possible so we could review all of the rules. All right, what we have here in zero normal form represents my first shot. What we have is we have a computer table, which the primary key of it is computer ID. We store the building code, the building name, the room, room description, your purchase. Then we have application code one, application name one, application code two, application name two, and finally application code three. All right, to review, the first normal form says that we're going to eliminate repeating fields. Why is this bad? Well, again, it's bad for a couple reasons. First of all, um, how do we know that a computer is only going to have three applications on it? If, for example, the computer number two, you want to install a fourth application, there would be no space in the database to do that, and, and that, wouldn't be, uh, that wouldn't be good. Secondly, notice that for some of them that have less than three applications installed, there's wasted space of wasted columns. Lastly, notice if we were going to write a query, if we want to know every machine that had, for example, um, Visual Studio installed on it. Uh, Visual Studio could appear really in any of the three positions, and that would make our queries much more complex. All right, so for all those reasons, repeating fields are bad. So our first step is to eliminate them. And how are we going to eliminate them? We're going to take those fields out and make another table. All right. Um, do note that when we do this, we can't lose any information. For example, currently we know that application one has Microsoft Office and Peachtree. Well, when we go and we change our uh, tables to break this out and, and add a new table, we can't lose sight of that. We can't lose that information. We still need to keep that relationship. So I apply the first normal form, and what do I have? I end up with two tables here. All right. And my two tables are a computer table and a computer application table. So the computer table has the things that are true just about the computer, not about the computer application. And notice we do not have any repeating fields on there. Now there's other problems, and we'll get to those in a minute. In the computer application table, notice what we have is we still retain that relationship between the computer and the application, but we don't have repeating fields. So we've, we've, uh, if a computer happened to uh, have four applications or five applications, it wouldn't matter. We'd just add an additional row um, for the additional applications. Plus, uh, again, as I said before, this makes the querying much easier if we look for every computer that had Microsoft Office, for example. All right, so we got rid of that problem, but again, other problems exist. And what the second normal form says is take a look at the tables and find things that depend only on part of the primary key. All right, well, for the computer table, that's not an issue, right, because it only has a single part primary key. However, if you look at the computer application table, you'll notice that the application name really only depends on the application code. For example, Microsoft Office is Microsoft Office, regardless of whether it's on computer one, computer two, or computer three. So in that sense, the name of the application depends only on the code. All right. Why is that a problem? Again, it's a problem because of redundancy. We will have Microsoft Office in the database several times. That always would lead to the possibility of, for example, spelling it incorrectly in one case, or if we had to go back and change it or whatever, if we wanted the full word Microsoft instead of M slash S, we'd have to change it in many places. When you have to change something in many places, there's always a risk that you won't completely do it, and as a result, you'll have inconsistencies in the database. So what's the solution for that? Well, what we want to do is we want to take those fields, which only depend on part of the primary key, in this case, application name, and create a new table for those. That is keyed by the portion of the primary key on which it depends. 
that is application code. So what we're going to do then is break it out into its own table. We are still going to keep this table, the computer application table, to tie together the computers with their respective applications. So applying the second normal form, we end up with this. We end up with a third table, a computer table which shows uh, all the computers that exist, a computer application table that shows the relationships between computers and applications, and finally an application table which uh, contains the application code and the name of the application. All right. Again, notice that throughout this process, what are we doing? We're taking what we had originally, which was really several entities all disguised as though it was one table and breaking it down into the appropriate number of entities that we really have. Uh, in addition, we're looking to find uh, what attributes belong where, uh, associate the attributes properly with the entities. All right, so we're now in second normal form. All right. The last thing that we want to do is we want to find things that don't depend on primary key fields at all, all right, that depend uh, on non-key fields. All right. And the only table in which we have that problem is the computer table. Computer application table, well, application code does depend. Or application code and computer ID together are the primary key. There are no non-key fields, so that, that table we don't need to examine. And in the application table, Again, the application name we've already identified depends on the application code, so it does depend on the primary key. However, if we look at the computer table, there's a couple of issues. All right? The building name, for example, only depends on the building code. It doesn't depend on the computer. The business building is a business building, regardless of whether you're talking about computer one, two, three, or four. All right? Likewise, the room and the room description don't depend on the computer. In other words, for computer one, BU-106 isn't the open lab, and for BU, uh, or for computer two, BU-106 being a classroom or whatever. If BU-106 is an open lab, it's the open lab period for all computers. So therefore, we have these sets of fields, these four fields here, that depend not on the computer ID, but the building name depends on the building code, all right? And the room description depends on a combination of the building code and the room number. There might be another room 106 on campus in the Advanced Technology Center or whatever that will have a different um, description. Therefore, what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to break this information out into some additional tables. A building table that will contain all the information about the building. And finally, a room table that will contain um, all the information about the room. So that will be the last step. When applying that, we end up with this. We end up with a total of with a total of five tables. All right. We end up with a computer table. Now it's still going to have the building code and the room number in it because we still have to associate that computer with that particular building and room. However, it has no additional information about the building and room. Instead, that information is carried in separate tables. So we only have one place where we define that the, that the uh, BU building is the business building, as opposed to having several places. Likewise with the room table. And any information we have about the room, the description, if we stored the capacity of the room, and so on, would be in that one table. All right. Here's the final answer that we have for this. We've taken what started out as being just one table, what was one entity, we've broken down into the various entities, and we ended up with five of them. Again, we did this in a systematic way. Now, some people, after they have a lot of experience, can go to the final answer a little quicker than this. They don't necessarily, um, uh, or they may think that they can go the answer final, uh, final answer quicker than this. The thing to keep in mind, though, is the normalization rules is a systematic process. All right. Now, again, as I said before, your first guess at doing this, if you were doing this from scratch, might not look like mine. And that's okay. Maybe you were aware that the applications need to be in its own table or whatever. The point is, is wherever you start, you apply these rules and you apply them systematically. And that helps guarantee that the solution that you come up with um, is effective and creates a da database with no redundancies and one that is easily maintainable uh, and easily changeable for uh, changing circumstances. If you have any questions at all about this, feel free to send me an email. Thanks.